Chris Bishop. Mr Speaker, Phil Twyford just said that this bill was about a, a bunch of blather and flimflam. flam well, I've got to say to you, that is deeply rich and ironic coming from that member. Because that member has spent the last two years, while well, he's been the Shadow Minister for Housing, uh, going up and down the country uh, speaking flimflam and blather himself. This is the guy who supported loan to value ratios before he opposed them. This is the guy, this is the Member of Parliament who supported the thrust of the government's social housing reforms before he decided that they were a bad idea and he was opposed to them. In fact, he even turned up to the Social Housing Providers Conference and told them that transferring ownership of social housing to the private sector or to the community sector was a good idea and that they would do a good job and that often they were better than the state before he decided to oppose it. So this is the person, uh, sir, that is the king of outrageous slurs and accusations. And you can see it every day in question time. And you can see it every time he gets up and speaks in the House. The anger and the venom against Nick Smith. He was mentioned about 14 times during his speech, sir. So for, the, for Phil Twyford, who launched by himself a, a personal vendetta and campaign against people of Chinese ethnicity in this country to turn up into Parliament and say that this bill is full of blather and flimflam, sir, I find deeply ironic. You know, but I think it is worth reflecting on the campaign that the Labour Party has launched against, or that Phil Twyford, I should say, has launched against people of Chinese origin. It was deeply offensive, it was deeply repugnant to New Zealand values, and it was deeply strange, sir, coming from a party that in 2002, quite rightly, uh, issued an apology to people of Chinese background for the poll tax of the 1860s, sir. And so to turn around in 2015, in 2015 in multicultural New Zealand, sir, or, I or, find order, order. strange. The, uh, the member preceding the member did take a very wide approach to the bill, but he didn't take a full two minutes until he mentioned it. And I want to invite the member to at least address the bill. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Sir, sir this, the, the Taxation Bright Line Test for Residential Land Sir Bill is, is a good bill. It is, not, it is not, as the previous member said, a, a political response to the housing crisis. It is, it is not, uh, as the previous member said, uh, something that the National Party is only introducing because to do so would be to, uh, to do anything more than that would be to disadvantage our rich mates. I mean, if, uh, I think on all three readings of this bill, Phil Twyford has made the outrageous slur against the National Party that we are not doing something or doing something uh, because of outside interest outside this, part, outside this house, because of money or because of, or because of donations or things like that. Outrageous, sir. So that's not, that's not the point of this bill. This, point, this bill, sir, is all about fairness in the taxation system. It's all about making sure that people do actually comply with tax rules properly. Uh, and David Bennett, my colleague, has given a very good elucidation of how the bill uh, does that, sir. Sir, I, I briefly want to focus on this um, issue about the main home exemption, because members opposite in, in all three readings of this bill, sir, have criticised this provision, the exemption that the bill provides for the main home. And in particular, sir, they've criticised uh, the exemption that's provided or the definitional term around um, uh, the, the person, yeah, with whom, as, as Mr Cosgrove says, the, with whom the person has the greatest connection. And they say, they've said some really, I've got to say, sir, some really silly things about this provision. So let's run through what they've said. The first thing uh, that, that they've said, and Grant Robertson said this in the first reading and, and, and other members have repeated it subsequently, is that this is an invention. In fact, you just heard Phil Twyford say, well, this is an invention. This term doesn't exist in law. Well, yes, that is true. And as I think I said in the second reading, or it might have been the first reading of this bill, uh, actually, this is a parliament, and parliament makes law, and sometimes we use terms that don't exist already. I mean, that's not actually that radical. Sometimes we pass pieces of legislation that contain words that have been combined together to make a phrase that doesn't currently exist. So that is not actually a particularly good point of rebuttal to the idea that this is a good bill, that it's an invention. OK, so that's, that's the first point. Okay. Secondly, and secondly in response to this, uh, sir, I've actually talked to the officials and the phrase the greatest connection or with whom the person has the greatest connection is a carefully chosen phrase. It's carefully chosen because although it might not exist in New Zealand statute law right now, it does exist in case law. And members opposite should know, anyway, that the laws of New Zealand are not just based on what we pass here in Parliament or regulations that the executive passes, but also built up through case law. So that, so, 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 sir, that phrase
phrase has been carefully chosen, it would allow the courts to apply, sir, this law properly. What was the second thing they said in response? And we heard this from Jacinda Ardern yesterday. Jacinda Ardern got up and said, oh, this is totally subjective. This is just subjective. It's just a subjective test. No, it is not a subjective test. It is not up to, it is not up to the person uh, to define that. Order, it is an order. objective test. Sorry, I, I, I apologise to the member. Um, members have a set amount of time for which they can speak, and it is not the role of opposition members to try and shut them down in the way that members are trying to do at the moment. Chris Bishop. Well, th thank you, Mr Speaker. So it's, not, it's not a subjective test, it is an objective test. So Jacinda Ardern is completely wrong. And if people try and claim that they have a, a greater connection to the, the crib or the batch, uh, they will have to prove that. And it will be an objectively proved. They will, have to adduce, they will have to adduce evidence. And the courts, if it gets to the courts, will have to examine that. And they will find one way or the other. Again, it's like explaining the judicial function uh, to the members opposite. It's like public law uh, 214 at the Victoria University. Uh, I mean, I mean, David Parker out there must be ashamed of some of the stuff that gets said by members opposite. So what was the third thing that, 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 that the Labour Party have said? They said, oh, well, this will just let people, you know, classify the apartment they live in in Wellington when they come for Parliament uh, every week, or they'll be able to classify their batch or beach house as, as, as the, the place in which they have the greatest connection and will be able to exempt from the law. No, as I said before, sir, that is not uh, going to happen. So, sir, this, this phrase doesn't exist in law as it is at the moment, but that is not remarkable. That is not an argument against passing the law. That is just a statement of fact. So some of the criticisms from Labor in response to this bill have been very silly. Sir, this is a good bill. This is a bill that will improve compliance with tax law. It will make our tax system fairer, sir, and I commend this bill to the House. Oh, great.